So today or this week, um, Cebu City, Philippines has been put again under ECQ because of the COVID threat. And I know that most of you guys are really excited to go out the streets and go back to work and you know go to malls and enjoy time outside the house. However, for now that's not advisable. So maybe we can find ways to keep ourselves productive while we are inside our homes. Having said that, on this video, I'm going to show you a hobby of mine that I've started years ago that you might find interesting and you might want to try at home. But before that, I would like to thank all of those who yeah. viewed and subscribed to my channel since last week. Thank you so much for your support. And for those who just, um, you know, visited my channel today or watched this video today, please do not forget to click on subscribe, the like, and notifications bell. Oh, I, I got that all mixed up. Please do not forget, as always, Please do not forget to click on like, subscribe, and the notifications bell for my future videos. So today I'm going to show you the basics of needle felting. Needle felting is a craft where you have to use some wool and a set of needles to create shapes and figures. Now I'm not going to go into the details of how to do it, I'm just going to show you later. Um, but I started this hobby a few years back when I was so bored and I wanted to do something different. It is not a very common craft here in the Philippines, so I had to really, you know, search the internet um, and order the entire kit from eBay. So it took me about a month before I got it, and I even had to go to the post office to get the package. But, but you know, all the effort was worth it. I enjoy the hobby, and I would like to share this with you today. I got my needle felting starter kit from Heidi Feathers for $33.28. I think that's already about $1,600 plus in Philippine Peso. The kit includes the wool in different colors. It also includes the instruction manual with simple projects that you can follow. It has the foam, the finger guards, seven needles, and the needle handle. So first you have to prepare the materials that you need. Set the foam on a flat surface, because this will serve as your stage. Today we'll start with something simple, like a cute pig. The silver needle is for heavy shaping. Normally, it's used for the biggest part of the figure, let's say, the body of an elephant. The green needle is also used for shaping. It's also good for attaching pieces together. The cream star needle more or less has the same function as the green needle, only that it weaves the fibers faster. The red needle or the worker needle is good for shaping as well. It's good for sculpting and bigger details. For finer details and neat surfaces, you can use the blue needle. The light blue twisted needle is for flat felt, smoothing, and condensing. And finally, for the finest details like the eyes or cat whiskers, you can use the gold needle. Connect the needle to the handle and make sure it doesn't wobble. The amount of wool that you'll need will depend on the size of your figure, but you have to remember that the wool will condense and shrink during the felting process. I've chosen the pink color for the body, gray for the spots, black for the eyes and nose, and flesh for the inside of the ears and the snout. Make sure you wear the finger guards. Trust me, it's better to be safe than sorry. I used the silver needle to create the general shape of the body. Once I get my rough oblong, I switch to the cream star needle to polish the shape. I use the light blue needle for condensing. It is not really advisable, but you may opt to not connect the needle to the handle if you're confident enough that you can handle it and avoid injuring yourself. For this project, I simply created indentations to create four legs and the snout of the pig. I've added a tiny amount of wool for the ears. 
I use the blue and light blue needles alternately when working on the details. For the finest ones, I use the gold needle. Once you're satisfied with the shape and the firmness, you may proceed to adding the little details, like the snout, inside of the ears, the eyes, and the nose. When I'm working on fine details, I personally remove the finger guards because it's easier for me. But if you decide to do the same, please be very, very careful. This activity is no way connected to voodooism or witchcraft. For the final touches, I'm adding the gray spots on my little pink pig to give it a little more character. And here is my pretty little pink pig. to click on like, subscribe, and the notification bell for my future videos. You may also browse my channel for my previous videos on my top 3 PS3 video games and also my cheap and quick makeup routine which you should follow at your own risk.